Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Hi. Tara Keen. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? You look great. Oh, you know, Ross, you are not even Kmart version of Ron Jeremy right now. Thank you. But I'll take you're that, You're doing actually. great. I'll take that, actually. You look good in white, but it's like uh, you're the one of the filthiest people I know. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I yeah. mean, that's great. Just own that. You own that shit. So, so, so Dan's like, we got to get this girl on, on the show. She yes. is an all-American dirtbag. Yeah, yes. Funny and... Yeah, and hilarious yeah. and rad. And then Jared also had said that you were the one that got away. A long, um, a long you know, time ago. I have heard that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bro Bye. At. Bye. Bro at the Bro at the Drinking Bro Bye, podcast. Bro at, you beautiful leaving. bitches. <laughs> You guys are going to go out and tear it the fuck down tonight, aren't oh you? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you get my man away, then, yeah, we're going to we're gonna tear down that poor man. Yeah, I, I, I was, by, by the way, I, I was near death level of exhaustion last night. I was like, I just want to lay down on the table and go to sleep. I don't blame you. But even when I still week. met you, you were still very lively. And everything I've ever imagined, like meeting you. It's so weird because I've listened to your voice like for so long and I met you and I was like, oh, this motherfucker. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, I, it really is real. It really is. And you're it like, really hey, man, is. Like, yeah, I'm it's, living that I mean, fucking life. When I was in the Marine Corps, I was still listening to this shit and it was crazy because I've never like ever thought myself to be on this podcast, right? Like, really? No. Because I'm just, I'm, I, I feel like I'm normal maybe, but also. <laughs> No. Other people don't. Well, we're all shitbags here. Let's be clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody's. Like this, well, the reason t- the reason you feel normal here is because we're also pieces of shit. Yeah, we're terrible. It's not humans. because we're actually I'm terrible. Normal. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nailed it. Get that pun though, because like honestly, my best friend Virginia, I was like married at the time, mm-hmm. and I was like, well, I'm getting divorced, so I need like a new at. Like, right. I'm not hey, Miss Keen anymore, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, So she was like, I'm pterodactyl, or I'm terrible. And the I'm terrible just stuck so good with well, me. Well, how is that so not well, taken already, I guess? right? Yeah. That um, seems very natural that somebody would have come up with that before, but no, I guess obviously no one did. But it's, it's a play on words. Yeah, of course. If you think about it, because... Even though I'm not like the worst person to ever walk this earth, mm-hmm. like some of the shit I say in post is like, what the fuck is wrong with this bitch, right? So I get that a lot. Like, what what fucking planet are you from, first of all? Because you're not, you're pretty mean. And that's the thing. I'm not mean. I'm just, I find very dark humor yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, same. And I find very like... Th- like most things that people won't find very funny, I find it very funny. Uh, like what? Give me an example. I know this is. I know it's hard. OJ Simpson. That is that. hard. OJ Simpson. OJ Simpson, Sim- hilarious, OJ Simpson sorry, memes are so fucking <laughs> yeah. funny. Why well, post three to five a week? So. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And- I know, Daniel, because I follow you, and your memes are like next level. I'm laughing, but if I posted them, I would get fucking blacklisted. Get down, like, yeah. oh, she fucking sucks, and not that I care. Mm. However, some of the things that I post are very borderline, but I've already said something that has triggered like millions of Americans at this point by right. calling dudes that don't have dicks that wear gray sweatpants and they, they have peepees. Wieners. Wieners, yeah. No, that's not a wiener. That's a peepee. Oh, uh, well, that's a wieners. That's a peepee. A child's penis. I, by the way, I'm just that's learning about the gray sweat thing, sweatpants thing today. So I bought a pair, came out. Dong was swinging in it, right? Yeah. And Jesse was like, where, where the fuck are you going looking like that? And I was like, what Why do you mean? are you going out there looking like a slut? It, yeah. Because like, your dick print is out, right? So Why the gray, though? She goes, and, and I go, I, dude, I just bought these at the fucking it's store. It's pronounced. For some reason, gray sweatpants just show the outline of the dick so well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, That's also the that most common ridiculous. color for sweatpants, right? It is for right? men. Right? <laughs> like, all of mine are gray. Yeah. Like, yeah. literally. Yeah. Except it's for the weird. ones that have cats all over them. Well, the cat ones, Daniel, are um, your prerogative. But yeah, I don't even gray sweatpants have you going to the gym looking like a slut, just like my gray booty scrunch fucking leggings have mm-hmm. me looking like a slut. I you like how she uses your government name. She does. She's you're one of like th- three people. three people. <laughs> 
that use my full Christian name. <laughs> it's really funny. Oh, boy. Oh, well, you know. You can call me whatever you want. I don't give a shit. Wow. So everybody People, says you, you've got the craziest Instagram on the planet. I don't uh, think It fluctuates. It does. So like it, Sometimes it's business for a little while, and then she like gets bored or in a mood, and it just gets dark as fuck real fast. <laughs> and it used to only be dark as fuck for a long time, for like two years, really. It was just fucked up shit. Like if you, she's one of those people who, if you checked out her story at night, because it's it's night, it's almost like night Amazon shopping, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's night posting, just running through memes and posting the most fucked up shit over and over and over again. Yeah, oh. yeah. I, I enjoyed I, those. Did they you kind of calm down for a while? I, think I were love dark humor, yeah. right? And because of the companies that I work with, sometimes it's not PC, right? But guess what? I'm not PC. Mm-hmm. I've never been PC. I grew up in a very like open home where things are said that aren't PC. Mm-hmm. And I love my parents for that. Mm-hmm. I really do because I find humor in the things that people don't find humor in. And that's like the best thing to me because if you can't find humor in something, then what is your life? Yeah. Right? Like World War Three. Like I was posting the most fucked up memes on Twitter mm-hmm. and people are on there like, how could you fucking joke about this? Well, one, cause I'm not going to get drafted yeah. so I can fucking joke yeah. about it. But I love dark humor. Dark humor mm-hmm. to me is the best fucking thing on the world. Because if you really think about it, like you're still laughing, whether you're admitting it by posting it on your story or mm-hmm. not, you think it's funny. Well, dark humor has the ability to, uh, to disarm, for lack of a better phrase, the negative impacts from focusing, like hyper focusing on negative shit. Yeah, like it's easy to get caught in that spiral where you're just like, exactly, God, everything's fucked up. But if everything's fucked up, and you're like, shit, everything's fucked up. Maybe. And it's funny, yeah. right? It's like, like as like, long as it's fucked up and it's funny, yeah, yeah. because honestly, so say we go to war, hmm. are you gonna go to war better? Like being like. This is so serious, or like, <laughs> I I wouldn't know I would. what I would I, I wouldn't know would. what doing it seriously would feel like because we just like exactly uh, roasted the fuck out of each other all the time. My point. And did weird so shit. like the old Marine Corps, like you roasted the fuck out of each other, right? So if you don't find anything funny, like how are you going to get through that? You're going to be depressed, and mm-hmm. you're going to have more mental issues. And people people argue this all day and all night, but humor is literally like. Laughing is endorphin, right? Mm-hmm. So if you find endorphin in the things that you say and the things that you see, mm-hmm. like that's going to bring you to a better mood. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you're you're doing it organically at that exactly, point. Yeah. Exactly. Instead of having to take so, SSRIs, which over time, I fuck your brain I heard up. some fucked up shit in my day that I laughed at and people are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? I'm in a fucked up situation. So yeah. why would I not find this funny? Right. Are you still in the military? No, I got out two years ago. No shit. Yeah, so I've been doing my damn thing, and it's the, it's the best thing ever. Let me ask you this, because uh, I'm not speaking out of school here, because you were literally just on my wife's show. Yeah. You're an attractive Marine, right? Was that a difficult for you? No. So I'm... Because I, one would think, and this is a civilian approach to it, that sure. every dude would just be like, man... You're the only hot girl there, so what do you do? At that well, it doesn't point? even matter if the girls are hot, to be honest. But it, yeah, you, yeah would, you would get more attention. It doesn't. Um, well, for when I was in the fleet, so after like you go to MOS school and boot camp and everything, mm-hmm. like so when I was in the fleet, I was actually married. Oh, gotcha. Um, so I did. I, anybody could have said anything they wanted to, and it did not amount to me Mm. like i did not pay it any attention i was still getting posted on the military pages it didn't matter um so basically like it i just gotcha and to be honest like i don't think i was as as attractive as anybody else thought i was okay i mean there was obviously like girls that didn't look like me or take care of themselves i guess you could say um but it was not, I, it wasn't something in my mind. Like people would be disgusting to me and I would immediately find out about it and just fucking like light them up. I can give you like one experience where apparently after my first shoulder surgery, mm-hmm. there was a group chat going around my squadron and stuff that I was sucking dick to get out of duty. 
And how do you do that with your shoulder all fucked up? Like, you That's be what to... I'm saying. It was my dominant hand. No, like, you, no, just... shit's not as good with my left hand. Like, fuck. The I've been there, done that. Yeah, it would like, take this too shit long. doesn't work as well. No, it's like a retard hand. You Granted, can't do after my second surgery, I could use my left hand a lot better, but I'm still not going to suck dick and fucking stroke it with my left hand, right? Mm. Yeah, it's just not going to so, happen. So, like, they were talking about it. I got sent the screenshots, and I was immediately angry because I was like, how fucking dare you? Like, I'm your peer. I'm your junior Marine. It was like staff and some above talking about it. I was sucking dick to get out of duty. And I was like, look, <laughs> if I was sucking dick to get out of duty, I'd be out of the Marine Corps. I know, right? It's like, uh, would that work? What? Could you suck dick to get out of duty? I mean, what are you, that's my first question. Yeah, is Would it possible? actually work? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Like how, it would be too difficult. To that would be that. a good dick sucking if you get out of duty. Because you'd have to blow like four or five different people. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Like, no. Yeah, that's a lot of people to blow. I mean, that your, was like your jawline would thing. be so cut up, though. It like, would. Yeah. I would have like the slimmest face. Yeah. And like, look, bitches, I got a double chin for days. So like, that's a lot of dick to suck. Yeah. yeah. And yep. Yep. ain't nobody got time for that, really. No. no. You got shit so to do. that you, was like the... My probably my favorite moment in the Marine Corps when I got to chew out a staff NCO mm. for fucking talking poorly about me. I, I'm so sorry. I can't use my dominant hand. Right. And you have to use that dominant hand to unlock these and like sit there. Mm. And I, I don't know a lot of people that have had shoulder surgery before, but uh, that's the worst pain of my life. Yeah. Typically. And that had happened like probably a month after my first, my second one, actually. Hmm. So I was like, okay, well, it's not my fault. Somebody fucked up my surgery first. Right. So I'm sucking dick now. What yeah. makes you think I would suck your dick without my hand? That's, that's the first place <laughs> my mind went. <laughs> my point, Honestly. though, right? Like, like just be didn't. Like, here's, I, if, I, if I start accusing people of shit, I run through the whole list. Like, well, that couldn't be feasible because of this. I, if right. I'm going to make shit up, it's going to be real. You know uh, what I mean? I, but it's going to be stupid. It's going to yeah. be stupid real. That's why I say shit all the time. Uh, God, who was it before? Oh, the girl from this morning. She was like, I can't tell if you're being serious or not. Oh, yeah, you yeah, keep yeah. saying horrible things and I can't, like, is this guy fucked up or what's going on here? We had a, but that's the great humor. Mm, like, porn star on earlier. Yeah. Uh, well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's skip it. She was, she's up for best newcomer, though. Good for her. Right? That's fucking awesome. Yeah. You've got to keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Exactly. She's doing that. She's doing that. My point, especially if you're going to excel in like a job like that, fucking, I mean, don't keep your feet on the ground. Fucking arch your back, girl, and put it on the bed, but. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if she was sucking dick to get out of doing stuff, she'd still be doing stuff. She'd still be doing stuff, yeah. yeah. It's weird how that works. My it's, point. It's strange. Like, if you were like, that's like one of my favorite like insults to people is like, especially dudes. It's like, oh, you probably suck dick for money because your feet are a constant or your fingers are constantly on social media putting girls down. You must suck dick for money mm -hmm. because you have like this ability to just like comment on everything mm -hmm. and you don't use your hands. So you must suck at sucking dick. And that's where all your free time mm -hmm. goes. But you, you do have to go back to the crumpets and tea situation where, you know, you sure. could just dip it in there if you wanted to. You know? If you want. So but that's not really a thing. Eh. It is and it isn't, you know? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You get a, let's say you didn't use that hand. You could just dunk it right in, you know? Dunk, just kind of dunk poke it. Dunk what into what? Poke it right there. The dick into the mouth. You can just poke it right through. But nobody mm. likes that. No, If it you're doesn't. not putting it in the back of your throat, like, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're. That's how, no, that's how you know. We've talked, we, I've actually said this on the show before. This is how you know a girl is knows what she's doing when she's sucking dick. Some, sometime very early in the process, she chokes, makes herself gag on it. Because it produces the very uh, good slippery spit. That's how you know. A different good type of saliva. Spit. Yeah. Yeah. But also, if she's a real bitch, that shit's going to make her wet as fuck. It, Think about it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because it's like, oh, I'm choking myself, mm. right, yeah. into oblivion, which is making my pussy wet. Mm. Like, wh I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm not with these girls who, like, go halfway and are like, Ugh! Because that's <laughs> not going to do anything. No. What is that doing? I'm sorry you have a gag reflex, but like also you can just suck on the tip. Yeah, yeah. And it'll give him something. Yeah, for sure. But also like 
like, please don't throw up on it because that's nasty. Yeah, it is. And, you know, that's something you learned in Catholic school, I believe, as a child. Yeah, yeah. I, I um, forget. Can't I get uh, Father Henderson was his name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Stop. We live and we learn. You know what I'm saying? You live and you learn, and I've been there. Yeah. Which is funny because you guys, times. I mean, it wasn't the typical. So you guys were in a long term relationship for a while. Uh, 13 years. Yeah. 13 so, years. Yeah. Dang. We finally I mean, broke, that's, broke that's, it off at uh, 27. Yeah. That's actually the longest relationship of your life. But my, look my what you life. got now. Bro. I know, right? Uh, I'm closer to God, and I'm closer to my, my new wife. Um. And her cervix. <laughs> mm. <laughs> How did you, how did you meet Tiffany? How did all that get started? Tiffany so Hart? Um, we met through the legging company that we both worked for. Okay, and it was just incredible. Like her energy is just so electric, and that fits mine. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have a lot of friends. I have a lot of acquaintances, but not a lot of friends. And her energy just immediately emitted to me like it's somebody that I need to be around because it's so electrifying mm-hmm. um i'm not gonna lie we we fucking get on facetime and talk shit and like all that but she's such a good person and you know sometimes i doubt my ability to pick up on good people but immediately her i was like no it's tara and tiffany like how could you get any better than that really tnt tnt yeah. dynamite yeah. yeah boom because it's like <laughs> no don't say that because we have to pay them every time we do that we do yeah we do just don't do the melody i think we could say the words yeah we can melody. say the words we can't do t- the melody no and no. yeah t- t- okay well, just don't I'm, say it really fast it's dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> we <Yeah. are> exactly <laughs> great now we but own it's 25, just like 000. our <laughs> personalities vibe so well that i immediately picked on that we're going to be forever friends and that's honestly proven to be you're, very you're true you're both very uh savagely honest people yeah and people can, hate that that could be problematic when two people like that get together sometimes oh but yeah it, you know the the other part of it is if you're not one of those people that like you can have a blowout argument and then half an hour later like well did we solve that if not let's solve it and then we'll move on because i like to operate if it's people that i'm working with or or care about i operate under the premise that Provided everyone is is negotiating in good faith, the end result is going to be that we're going to be together, whatever that means, right? So sure. we can have whatever fight we want. Yeah. And then you fix it and move on. It's like every fight doesn't have to be a fucking tragedy. Sometimes shit just happens. It's like skinning your knee. Yeah, it sucks, but your leg doesn't fall off. Right. After that. You exactly. Know, and that's the thing. Like, so Tiff and I have disagreed on things. But it was for the greater good almost like it was it was never going to be anything to end our relationship Mm -hmm. because we can both adult and see that both sides Mm -hmm. and decide like, hey, like this is good for you, but it's not good for me. Right. And we can always almost speak to each other in like the way that you think about it where you have an adult conversation, Mm -hmm. right? So, well, I don't agree on this. Okay, well, this is why I think about this. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Like, I see where you're coming from, right? So it's one of those things where her and I just mesh so well because we're just very high energy. I'm a very high energy person. Yeah, it's super irritating. I know. (laughs) (laughs) But it's irritating to most people. But guess what? Like, most of the... Like the best times of my life has been with Tiffany. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm sure. And now I got to meet your wife, and it's like very similar. Yeah, yeah. You know, like she's just as high energy, but a little different. And I'm always okay with different. Mm. Just it's it's different. And if you have the same morals as people, then you should be able to keep up with that energy. Like maybe, I think <laughs> maybe some all... people don't like words. Like I hate the M word, but like, the... wait, which one? Which, which one? I'm not saying it. M or N? M. Oh, I thought that was a N, and I was like, not we do Pam. Not... <laughs> Pam. We, we do not say that on the show. What, um, M. M. Uh, M is in Mike. Yes. Yes. What the fuck are you talking about? What's an M word? So, as a weather forecaster, meteorologist. Yeah. Um. You, have you to don't. Say you hate words. that word. I fucking hate that word. I the will... word meteorologist? No. Which one? What? What? Rain makes you. Wait, what? With an M. Yeah. 
We're, I how mean, would you describe a damp cake? That's how oh, I just... Oh, moist. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking hate that word. Man. I, it makes Dan, me... Dan, you that won was like, That was like pulling teeth right it there. It physically right. makes me angry. Like, moist? Now yes. I know. So you've never said to a guy I'm moist? No. No, okay. no, no. One woman under 80 has ever said that. Wow. Uh, well, the oldies. Well, yeah. I'm so that word. But being like a meteorologist is like... You have to say that word a lot, but I just say oh, it's going to be a wet weekend or like it's going to be Which damp. Is, are you a meteorologist on TV right Not now? Not yet. I'm getting there. I don't want to be on TV, though. Like, I don't want to be on TV. That would be a huge mistake for you to not be on TV. Yeah, I, why not? The uh, meteorologist is fucking rad. So my dad did that, by the you way. You should do the uh, so, Dr. Pimple Popper thing where you end up making more money from your bullshit than you do from your <laughs> actual job. Right. My dad did it. You don't have to be a real meteorologist. It's, you know that, right? But I love weather. That's the problem. So I'm I'm more focused on the weather aspect than the telling aspect because I can sit there and watch like somebody on Fox 5 spew this bullshit yeah. and they're not even right yeah. and they're just like reading off the script right. right um actually for as outgoing as i am i do not like being in front of cameras really no i don't i don't like speaking because for some reason um having somebody like put a camera on me and be like okay speak yeah or being in front of a colonel or something i used to do it all the fucking time it's so embarrassing but i'd be like I would forget my whole forecast. Uh, whole fucking forecast. I'd be like, bleh, 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 bleh. like stuttering, like not knowing what to say. Well, that could be your character, though. You could be the retard weather woman. With yeah, that'd be big a great titties. one. Retard yeah. weather woman. But I want to be like the Mexican weather forecaster yeah. with the big ass, yeah. but like it's both. Hilarious. You know? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Do it. Maybe it just is going to take me more practice, mm-hmm. like because obviously weather is a lot of practice. Like I did that for a long time. Right. You also say the, the word moist a lot, by the way. I know, and I hate it. Yeah. Let me hear you say it. You just can't one time. say. I can't say. Wet say it weekend. one time. Come on. I just one time. Tara, come I literally, on. I literally cannot. You're on the goddamn drinking bros right that now. Yeah. Say moist one I time. I cannot say it. I fucking hate Please. that word so much. Like you guys even saying it is making me mad, but like I'm not gonna take it out on you because you're just being assholes. But like, if you got on the news and said, "Hey guys, it's gonna be a wet weekend out there," that's that, what I'm saying. I could say it's a wet weekend. No, I don't know how to say the M word. A hot, gonna, a hot girl can't say it's gonna be a wet, wet weekend. weekend. You can't. That would yeah, go viral immediately. I can't. Like it's gonna be a wet weekend. You would be, you'd be no. on old row every single day. Every single Eddie day. I don't oh, care. It's gonna be a wet weekend, ladies. It's it's going to be really wet outside. Panties are going to be soaked. You might have to pack three extra pairs. It's going to be a real wet weekend. Can't do it. Can't do it. I can't do it. You can do whatever you want. This is America. Well, obviously, but I fucking hate that word so much that I can't. And again, we're talking about the word moist. Stop it. Moist. What made you get into the Marines, by the way? My dad was actually a Marine. Um, he was a combat engineer, and I was actually going to college at the time to be like law enforcement. I really mm-hmm. wanted to do FBI, and I J- one just day so was you like, know that would never have worked. Yeah, you, you and the—they're like the most straight laced, fucking high and tight motherfuckers of all time. Obviously, and you obviously, are not that. That, that yeah. something told me that that yeah. was not going to work. Yeah, and yeah. actually, it was Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Which for those of you who don't hammered. speak Spanish is that is the fifth of May. The fifth of something. Fifth of May. It's the fifth of May. Yeah. We, uh, me, my best friend, and her uh, boyfriend at the time, we were all talking, and I was like, you know, I don't know what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm going to go to law enforcement. I love police officers. Mm-hmm. Like, I always wanted to be one. I was going to be a cop and then go to the FBI. Right. And I. <laughs> drunkenly got this idea that i was going to enlist in the military and how old were you at this point uh 21 okay yeah i was 21 so i was like i'm gonna do this and then two days later i was <laughs> so i used to work at hooters Shock. you know I, I was gonna say shocker you look like every hooters waitress ever from daytona beach yeah 
Except Not in a bad in way. Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah, we love Hooters. We're big fans. I love. I, I like love, owls. Even I love Hooters. <laughs> I, I, love, love. I like titties, owls, chicken wings. Yeah. Why would I not like Hooters? But their chicken wings aren't. That They're not. Good. That That's good. the problem. They, I I enjoy them. Uh, yeah, but Dan you're white. Also, you're super white. Yeah, trash, I'm super white so, trash. Yeah. Um, and Dan's got a huge ceramic owl collection. A lot of people. I do. Don't yeah, know that. it's like but getting owls are weird. Cute, right? Yeah. Like they're super. Well, they're cute, assholes though. Two hundred sixty-eight. That's kind of like me. I'm 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 an asshole, but I'm actually kind of nice. Same. So it's like an owl. Same. Or everyone just thinks I'm like. No, you're very thoughtful. Sometimes. Mm. Mm. When I get blackout drunk, I'm not. No, you're. But, you're I've I've never seen that, but I've heard like horror stories about you really yeah. drunk. But there's some alter ego. Her name is Sasha. Oh, that's your drunken alter ego. That's it's my not drunken. Drunk alter ego. It's like yeah. blackout. Drunken. It's my blackout alter ego yeah, okay. when I just go the fuck off on whoever's near me. Sure. About things that have nothing to do with them. I kind of want to get in on that. Because you're not going to be able to hurt my feelings or make me mad no matter That's what, what you say. That's what you think right now. She's no, definitely you, there. I've, you've got to. I've hurt a, um, a lot of people's feelings by saying the things I say. And it's not something I would normally say. Mm-hmm. But it's like the demon in me. And that's probably why my boyfriend's parents hate me. Because I'm probably the devil. Um, but at the same time, it's it's not like me. Because I am, I am very sensitive to how people feel about things. However, I also feel like I'm doing a disservice by lying. Mm. So when I enlisted, I was working at Hooters. I was going to school. Yada, yada, ding dong. And we had had this conversation at Cinco de Mayo. And my best friend's boyfriend was enlisting in the army. And I was like, well, what have I enlisted in, the, in some service? You know, like, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. Why not? So I went to the Air Force first. I took my, like, practice ASVAB. Mm-hmm. This guy, this Air Force guy was such a dick to me. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Fuck you, dude. Like, I'm going to the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. Like, so I walked in there. And I was greeted by the best recruiters. I I don't have that horror story of like recruiters trying to fuck the police or anything. Mm-hmm. I literally had the best recruiters. They prepared me the best that they could. And I was like, well, I really love teeth. Like, I'm mm-hmm. really weird about teeth. And they were like, well, that's the Navy. Do you have like a shoebox full of teeth? No. Or something like like. No, I don't. He, he, are all of those your original baby teeth? These are all my baby teeth. teeth. Not my baby teeth. <laughs> he he collects little shoes. Yeah. You collect little shoes. Little shoes and like, then uh, all my baby teeth. Yeah, and if he sees, uh, I still have. No, my mom has those, but um, like I the, just love teeth. Like I love when people smile. It's like a laughing thing for me, and that's sure. I think why I have this weird humor that I do is I love hearing people laugh because a lot of people don't like think about the things I say when I say them and they're like, wow, that's fucking funny because a lot of people don't have the humor that like Dan and I do mm, like the yeah. dark humor. Cause that's been, I, I love abortion jokes and mm. <laughs> all yeah, that shit. Yes. So I enlisted the Dan Marine Dan dropped Corps. one earlier today that did not go over well with that Which young one? man. Oh yeah. That Which was, one? Uh, Can I hear what, it? What did I say? Um, it was, it was in context. So it was, we were having a conversation about something and I said something to the effect of, uh, uh, getting rid of those piece of shit kids or something like that. Yeah, I yeah, don't remember yeah. exactly how I worded yep. it, but it was something to that effect. Uh, Homegirl's mouth hit the floor. Yeah, she was not thrilled about that one. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know what? Sometimes you bring, if you get a 14 course meal, sometimes part of it comes out and you don't like it. You yeah. just move on to the next part. You, be, you don't you have to courses yourself you don't and like you get it. rid of it, you know? Well, well, I mean, have look, you shit yourself? You, recently. Yeah. No, no not recently. Kidding. Not recently. How no. long ago? <laughs> Like three years ago. Oh, that's oh, not three bad. Years ago. Shit. I mean, that's almost like it didn't even happen. It, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Where yeah. were you? I was at MCT in the middle of the uh, desert in Arizona. And why, why did you shit yourself? The food? This yeah, board. the food. Oh, you were. And I the, thought- <laughs> the bathrooms. So they didn't want the, like our like base camp to sink. So they put the, the shit bathrooms like really far away. Right. So, um. I have really long legs, but I also don't run very fast. And I had eaten a hamburger and a hot dog, which I'd been eating MREs the whole week. And I ate a hamburger and a hot dog and probably two more hot dogs. I don't know. I now, love hot dogs. MREs are notorious for block creating blockages. And then when you eat yes. real food again, it's yeah. just like, wow. So Apple milkshake. Yeah. I was literally, I had eaten things and we were all drunk. Like this was, 
essentially this was just a bad night anyway because of everything that had gone on but i was power walking to the shit bathrooms and all of a sudden i just shit myself you didn't make it i did not make how it. far how far were you i was halfway ah let's talk about the the poop itself yeah uh straight hard. liquid straight uh, liquid, straight liquid. Uh, yeah oh yeah. it was bad i was like i stopped in my tracks and i was like shit on the desert floor but. yeah i mean but honestly i think that's better than uh than a fucking squishy full turd coming oh out. no it was, yeah it was it was straight because you could just throw the, the the liquid pants away or whatever the fuck and then clean like take a shower but if you're if you have like like uh, caked up shit on you that's a process yeah, yeah. What, do you, what do you do in a sitch like that um i just remember uh, i just sat on the ground for a minute and i was like oh so you sat in it uh no, I sat on the top part of my camis and I was like, "Wow, I just shit myself" because I was drunk too. Sure. So I was like, I was thinking about it. And I was like, "What am I gonna do?" And I was like, "Oh, we get Libo tomorrow to go <laughs> to Yuma <laughs> to wash our clothes." And I was like, "Okay, bitch, <laughs> like you just shit yourself. It's fine. Your stomach hurts really bad, and mm. even after my stomach hurt really bad." Like something, I have a very sensitive stomach anyway. Right. And it just was not working. And I was like, okay, well, I get to wash my camis tomorrow. And I literally just took my laundry bag. I like, I literally waddled back to my tent, took them off. Um, I had water bottles just trying to fucking get the shit off me. Cause it was, I mean, my stomach fucking hurt. Like sure. it wasn't like a normal, like. Ooh, fuck! I just shit myself. It was like a, I feel like I'm, I have food poisoning. Yeah, it's like you took a or like uh, a round. Was a round two coming? Uh, yeah, yeah it yeah. was coming. And I, it, that feeling is like I've heard it hurts. It's like uh, uh, when you've been cream pied a bunch of times by dudes <laughs> on a weekend. Yep, and then you take sixty Plan B or whatever the fuck. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's a lot like going it creates on down an there. Issue. I heard one Plan B does that. I've I've honestly never taken Plan. Wow, I've where, never taken Plan. Where B. Where are you from, Tara? Uh, Virginia. There it is. There it is. I was waiting for a for a Virginia, oh, maybe a West. <laughs> yeah, maybe a West well, Virginia. No, she's not that bad. It is real moist up there. Anyway, so get back to the uh, <laughs> the giant shit you took in your own pants. Yeah. <laughs> How do you discard of all that shit? So no, I you don't. Just, you fucking use a water don't. bottle to spray off the fucking. I, that's I, I had like do it, six though. water no, bottles, it's and just I was a, like, get it off of me. You're just you're just mitigating at that point, so you can put it in yeah. your regular clothes, and it doesn't stink up your whole fucking room. And it was Ugh. weird because it was so dry; it almost like dried. What's like, the opposite of dry? Stop. Moist. Yeah, it was a little moist down there. <laughs> I'm never gonna stop for the next hundred years. I'm gonna Ever. be saying that word. And I hate. Pe- I hate telling people like. I hate that fucking word, but you know those flowers it, um, that like live forever. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I'm yeah. gonna get you like white flowers, and in black letters, it spells out the word moist. And you're not because it costs five hundred okay, bucks. But I hate getting you're flowers. Get I hate getting flowers. Well, then so I'll get please a, don't do that. I'll get a painting of you. Me, I, you know what they make those paintings of dogs? Like you put, you send them to your dog's face, and they yeah. put please them like don't an, do that. On an admiral and an admiral or general costume. Kimber does not deserve that. And then it just says I'm moist. Yeah, I'm moist. Uh, I'd like to get a picture of you <laughs> shitting yourself in the middle of that desert. Yeah, you didn't that. take a picture. I guess no, that was before I didn't. all this I, yeah. bullshit. No, I mean it was. I mean, what year was that? Like 2008 or nine or ten? No, like I was only in 13 to 17. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I had my phone, but I had AT and T at the time, mm. and it didn't. It didn't work out there, so... You should have boomeranged it. I should have, but boomeranged actually didn't exist then. Yeah. So... It's unfortunate. No, I mean, actually take off your pants and throw them like a boomerang. And see if they come back? Yeah. <laughs> they might it? have. They yeah. might have, honestly, and that was like... I just remember not speaking to anyone. I was so drunk, and I just like tore off my pants. I just cleaned myself up, and I was like, damn, bitch. Like, you really just did that. I just threw them in my laundry bag, and I was like, we're doing laundry tomorrow. No big deal. At, um, <laughs> in Yuma, and I was like, this is so embarrassing. I don't want to do this, but, I mean, it was reality. My, my stomach did not react from eating shitty food yeah. to eating, like, something real. And I should have expected it. I didn't. Look, if you're going to shit yourself, Yuma's a great place to do it. Yeah. I should have just shit in the middle of the desert. Um, but unfortunately, I was in the middle of running. I'm not a fast runner. Yeah. 
And I shit myself. I bet you wanted to lay down on a ghost bed from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Yeah, you want to get that mattress protector in case you're somebody you love. Yeah. yeah. One of our yeah. sponsors is a mattress company. They got a cover sure. for people like you. So yeah. if you uh, uh, poop your pants, then uh, you got a cover. Then you can just wash the cover and it doesn't soak through the mattress. Mm. You're not looking at a, a, a browned, you don't, moist you don't want mattress. Smo- you don't want that shit to soak into your mattress, no. right? Imagine a, just a turdy bowl of soup. I mean, my mattress. Sopping. Before, I would say before the what mattress about a squirter, protector. though? You're not? What? You said you're not a squirter? I did not say that. What did you but say? I'm just saying a squirter does it. Oh, like, yes. Is, yes, we, we asked them that. Um, squirt proficient? Yes. So you can squirt all over it. We had a point. Again, we had a point store on this afternoon. Hmm. Um, so, yes, you can, you can squirt all over the bed, uh, all over the cover. It is squirt free. Okay. Turd free. Proof, blood free. Period. Like, let's say you're you've got heavy flow. Yeah, I don't know what your periods are like. Obviously, obviously, we can I talk imagine about it. it's heavy, right? No, probably heavy flow. It's not that bad. Uh, look, it's going to protect your your mattress, so you can bleed all over it. Um, and also, you could use a pillow to fucking. I mean, I don't know how it works. How does a woman's body work? Why would you ah. want to bleed on a pillow? Like, what are you going to bleed on? Yeah, the mattress. No, the mattress costs the more mattress- than the pillow. The mattress cover, Dan. Yeah, the mattress mm. cover. Yeah. You don't want to bleed on your pillow. Goddamn Who the right fuck you does don't. That? I mean, I get like putting a mattress under someone's ass to like give that deeper effect. Yeah, but yeah, that's, yeah, for sure. Like honestly, you really only have to do that if uh, you get a pee pee. <laughs> oh <laughs> God! Uh, ghostbed.com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros. They got a thirty-six month pay as you go program, no interest free. So yeah. you uh, can still buy it if you got a small dick too. Yeah, so if you got a small penis. Tara is you can still not buy saying one. that if you don't have a big wiener, you can't buy it. But um, I would just like to interject and say that. Type in the promo code Flash twenty five for twenty five percent off. It's super illegal, but do it anyways. No, I'm. I, we got that from Rich. I think, I think we're fine saying that, right? Um, Either way, if you're a military first responder, you get 15% off everything in the entire store, I including sleep that on a cover. Bed. Yeah, you're goddamn right. I do. I do. I sleep on a ghost bed, and I fucking love it. It's the best. Yeah, we I, we have one in our bedroom and then in our spare same, bedroom as well. Same. Yeah. And same. ghost bed we actually sent us the, um, the um, what's it called? There you go. The pro- not Well, we have a protector on our bed. Mm-hmm. But then we also have the other foam to make it even smushier. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So I love Ghost Bed. I've been sleeping on it for the past like eight months. Oh, mm-hmm. Actually, a year and a half, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're dope. They were great. Between, and I fucking love it. Between me, him, and Jared, we probably see four, six, eight. It's somewhere been between a long eight time. and ten of them, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we got yeah, like, yeah, a bunch of weird as shit. That's what I'm saying. I love, I love our Ghost Bed, and I would always recommend that shit because you can't get any better than that. Goddamn right. Uh, Same with our next sponsor, KillCliffCBD.com. Yeah, do you have CBD? Yeah, I do, actually. Uh? I do, actually. I used to take CBD all the time for my achy joints, especially my shoulder. Uh Uh-huh. And it helped a lot. Look at that. Uh, Kill, if you got to go to the the pee-pee room. Yeah, she's got to go dump it up, man. Yeah, dump it out. Uh, uh, KillCliffCBD.com That'll take away all your moistness um, <laughs> it'll, it'll help you have a nice Nice dirt flow in the back And uh, no It'll take the pain away So if your pooper hurts mm. You can uh, take some CBD and relax that butthole um, I don't know if it relaxes your butthole necessarily I think it would We right? should look into that I think it would We'll do some tests on it We'll put one of those uh, it, It's like a <laughs> <laughs> it's a device that measures gaps between things. I can't remember what it's called. Or you could use a micrometer or something to set it up there. And it uses lasers to detect the expansion of your butthole. Yeah. Right? And then you drink it. You wait the appropriate amount of time. And you see where it goes. Yeah. Go to KillCliffCBD.com. Type in the promo code Drinking Bros. You get 20% off and free shipping. Knocks it down to like three ninety a can. For, look, for the, the same price as a can of Monster, you get a fucking can of CBD with 25 milligrams in it. And you don't test you don't tell, there's no THC and that bullshit. It's fucking Kill Cliff, dude. They're the best in the biz. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, we've got. Yeah, come on in, sir. We got uh, getroman.com forward slash drinking bros. Boner pills. Boner pills. Do you ever, uh, you and your boyfriend ever partake in uh, boner pills for the weekend? Uh, no. We, we do boner weekends, uh, Dan and I. 
Splinter Weekend. Yeah, where it's just like, hey, man, let's just throw one down for the weekend. We just and, wait uh, for Jesse to go out of town, and then we wait. Is it, you're, yeah. You're, wait, did you tell, does she know? Well, she does now. She Shit. does now. So Dan and I take boner <laughs> pills. We mostly hang out and just watch Highlight. Yeah. Okay? Uh-huh. Um, Are you familiar and, with Highlight? It's the that Mexican sport. The hook. Well, it's, I guess it's not only Mexicans. A lot of Cubans Spanish, play it. Yeah, yeah, Spanish in general, but... Uh, yeah, it's got this little. It's almost like lacrosse. Put a hook they're, on your they're, And they're throwing like a hard rock ball. It's yeah. weird as shit. Really? People, nice. people get fucked up all the time playing it. But that's what we watch. Solid. You can almost die. Either way. So we either love way. having fucking boners. If you can't get a boner out there, you just want to party with one. Go to getroman.com forward slash drinking bros today. Mm-hmm. Free doctor's visits, which is nice. You don't have to go into a doctor and be like, oh, that's my, great. My dick don't work. Hey, doctor, my dick don't work. Oh, dick don't, my dick don't work. Oh, help me. My girlfriend needs me bad. Yes. Oh, she needs that fucking pain. Uh, now, you can just get it online. Uh, they've overtaken Viagra, top in the market. It comes in a discreet package. No one knows. Uh, is there any chance that your boyfriend's taking them and you don't know? And you're just like, hey, man. Oh, definitely You're not. throwing the wood this weekend a little, a little yeah. harder than you usually do. No. You're lumberjacking it. It's the same thing every time. I'm lucky. I'm okay. a lucky bitch. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> but I, you know. <laughs> let's, hey, talk, let's talk about it. If, yeah, hang you, on. You, if, if you don't have a boyfriend up. like Tara who's throwing that wood around, go and create your own at getroman.com forward slash drinking bros. Why are you a lucky bitch? <laughs> I have never had to worry about it, honestly. Yeah, it's throwing that wood, huh? Real lumberjack. Real lumberjack like. Yeah. I'm, pr- yeah. I'm proud of both you guys. Is he is he in the military? He is. Uh, what does yeah. he do? He's a Marine. Okay. He um actually recovers remains from oh, shit. Yeah. From uh past wars that we've lost military members in. So it's What a crazy uh, like fascinating, interesting job. It's amazing, actually. Um like I like I said in Drinky for Us, I really love war history and um, learning as much as I have, you know, we've lost a lot of Americans, uh-huh. um, in those wars, Vietnam, World War II, sure. anything like that. And like, they just go get them, the, the men and women that have been lost, mostly men, obviously, sure. because back then it was mostly men. Is that um, why you guys are in Hawaii for, yes. for World War II? Yes, we are. Gotcha. Yep. And then what do you, what does he do with the remains once, once he finds them? Do you try to deliver them back to, to family members or how does that work? I'm always curious because, yeah. uh, you know, you, you would think that just from the do- job description, one day you would get a rap on the door mm-hmm. and it's like, Hey man, your grandfather, a great grandfather, like these were his things. And, uh, is that, is that really how it works or? No, so actually, um, anybody that's been a POW or MIA uh-huh. um, is on a list. So they basically take these lists and try to find these men, right? So the past couple have been pilots that have been shot down. Okay. So I hate, I hate this, but um, why do you, why do you hate it? No, I hate it just because of like what war has done, mm. right? And these brave men and women have gone to war for our country and have passed away. And they also have not been found. So, but I love it because now they get to come home. Sure. Right? So, um, DPA is what they're called. Um, they go and find these men that have been lost in these wars in different countries. So they go and dig the remains. They verify it through a lab. And then they notify the families. So forensic science. Forensic science has there. come a very long yeah. way. Man, right? That's, that's crazy. Yeah, but so, if I die in a, in a war, I mean, I'm probably not going to go back to one. But if shit gets wild and I die over there, just don't go looking for me. I'm good. I don't have. Oh no, we'll bring you home. No, I'm bury you in a flower cast it, bitch. I've said (laughs) that would be his worst nightmare. Right, he wants to be thrown in a dumpster. No, I I said not so much. Just like my worst nightmare is the M word. I'd fucking bury you in a cow. Well, I'll be dead. A flower casket, and uh, it's not a preference. It's it's ambivalence. I don't care what happens. My body's just a dead meat sack. So just throw in the trash. Right, but once you (laughs) have been missing, right, for fifty plus years. And you fought in these wars. Right. 
at at the point where I have the greatest understanding for war history and why we are fighting these wars, mm -hmm. I would love to be brought home after that mm -hmm. for sure. Well, I'm I'm a weirdo though. I'm, well, but yeah. that's I'm not thing. trying to convince anybody the, of anything. But that's yeah. the thing; it was very different fifty plus years ago. Oh you yeah, know? when the wars was, actually mattered. You mean? Uh, I wouldn't even say that though. Like, Look, in World War Two, we fucking stopped the Nazis from taking over the world. Uh huh. In Gulf War One, we didn't do shit. Uh huh. We didn't do shit in the GWAT. It's all nonsense. But think about it though. Why? Why were these men still going? Because we're fucking warriors. That's what we do. My it doesn't point. matter what the fucking my task point is. exactly. So, <clears throat> so you look at guys, and uh, it's honestly it's people in general. Mm -hmm. And I like we were talking about this on um, drinking burlets as well. But people don't know a lot of war history, right? So why do you go to war, mm -hmm. right? To either subdue. People who are trying to take over power. To take what you want or protect what you love, typically. Exactly. Is what you do, yeah. Right. So that's the best way to put it. But so, like, Germany was trying to take over all of Europe. Right. Essentially. Mm -hmm. And most of the people that have been lost, except, I, I'm going to say, except for Vietnam, because we were trying to keep them from being a communist country, which happened yeah. anyway. Yeah. Right? Containment didn't work at all. It Not didn't. All. No. These men were fighting for their country and fighting for the right to be able to choose, correct? Mm -hmm. So you have these people that have died and you just want to bring them back home. No, I get it. Families. I'm not criticizing this process, no, 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 by no. the way. Absolutely I'm, not. I was Absolutely making a joke because I'm a Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But seriously, throw me in the trash. But yeah. throw Dan in the trash is what we're If you we're agree saying. to that, then we then that's fine with me. But I know that even if you agree to it, you're still gonna fucking do something super gay for my funeral because you're an asshole. Well, duh. So he whatever. wants. He still want you like. His, I want to get fired out of a cannon into a brick wall or some shit like that. Something dope. But he also uh, wants Ted to be in one your last gangbang. Happen. Okay. okay. I will. That's the thing. I will fucking make it happen. Well. His the other thing he wants is to be in one last gangbang, which I, I just said. So like, that's why we have porn star followers. Hello. <laughs> yeah. You think you can make it happen where you can fuck a dead guy? Um, that's necrophilia, and yeah. um, this goes six, there anything. are a lot of people this in goes America six miles that off love the coast. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not, there was a there was a, a coroner somewhere. Where was it recently? The, or was a uh, deputy or sheriff's deputy that got uh, arrested because he was doing weird shit to the dead bodies at the morgue. And his girlfriend, okay, so I read this story how yeah. this girlfriend got like a disease. She got maggots in her pussy, right? Oh, and they no. You like, say that out loud, but the word fucking moist is the problem. Yeah, Are you maggots fucking kidding me? in her pussy. Hey, go check out these she pussy got maggots, maggots, man. maggots. Stop. But anyway, <laughs> fuck you, Dan. Um, her boyfriend was fucking dead bodies in the morgue. Yeah. And the medical people that treated her was like, these are only like bacteria and maggots that come from dead bodies. And she like, I mean, Reddit's a hell of a drug, mm, dude. They like, figure shit out pretty fast. They What's that do. combo like, you know, um, they're like, I don't know, man, to be honest. <laughs> but it reminds me of a quote from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas where he's like, look, our only hope at this point is anybody that's in the position to bring the hammer down. What we've done is so crazy, they wouldn't possibly believe we've done it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like when you cross over that threshold, you got to go full crazy. I feel like you've done For some sure. fucking crazy shit. Not like fuck a dead body, but I, like, I could see. I mean, maybe I, I maybe stand one up and take pictures with it or something. Multiple dudes, something like that? No, actually. Really? Uh, probably. I, I'm going to be honest, and the craziest thing I've ever done was dated a porn star. Oh, okay. Shit. Yeah. Shit. And I knew it. And I still it's an it's anyway. an interesting experiment. But it, did all, you ever, did you watch his porn? Um, not really. Hmm. But I also um it it's it's very weird relationship dynamic, right? Like, so at first you're just cool with it. You're like, well, I already know what you do, and I'm fine with it. So was he currently active when you guys were dating? So like, was he fucking people and then coming home and be like, hey, I just slammed some pussy? So when we were first talking, our literal first date, uh -huh. 
he um my best friend actually introduced us because i was like fresh into the divorce process right gotcha so i was like i don't care like i want no feelings yeah so for a good six months i didn't care what he did i'm terrible i'm terrible terrible yeah Yeah. all right keep going so i i just didn't care right and it slowly morphed into me caring yeah and it was a very different dynamic then yeah that's good advice actually if you're uh, going through one of those dead inside periods try not to make any decisions that are going to affect your entire life or literally like, just do not weird porn stars no, no no you could do weird shit in the short term just make sure that the decisions you're making are easily reversible i was very i was very dead inside like yeah. i did yeah, yeah. not give a fuck about we, anything we've all been there and my sure. best yeah. friends will literally tell you that I was, I did not care. Like I was getting blackout drunk. Like I, I didn't care. I didn't care at all, but it was very, it was a very different experience dating a porn star versus like a normal man. right? Right. So you are dating a man that has sex for money. Mm -hmm. Technically, it's not a prostitute. Not, not technically, that's exactly what it is. Well, no, but it's they're fine. not. Kinda. It's fine. But We're, it's it's a lot different than I think the American public thinks it is. Like it's not fucking for pleasure. Right. It's a job. For it's sure, a yeah. job. Right. But I don't imagine a whole lot of prostitutes are really fucking oh, for pleasure well, either. Well, they're also on a lot of cocaine, so they don't care. Well, there's uh, definitely no drugs. There's definitely no drugs in, in porn, so. No, not at all. Very clean. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm totally joking. They're, Everyone's yeah, doing fucking cocaine. drugs. I'm, I'm on drugs right now. Let's do this. <laughs> Come on. This <laughs> is fucking showbiz, baby. We're in Vegas. That's We're where Vegas, all the magic but happens. But I also, I just, I never found the glamour in drugs, so I. You're just doing the wrong drugs, probably. Yeah. Like you're a you're no, a thoughtful, just, smart person. You should be doing like mushrooms. And yeah, shit is that like weed that. you were smoking, or is that just like a it's vape? Just nicotine. Oh, all right. I, I quit smoking like. Nine months ago, so smoking cigarettes. cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I um, love nicotine. Thanks, Marine Corps. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No um, shit. Yeah, it have was to a do... very different dynamic, right? Right. So yeah. I would imagine so. Uh, I don't see a lot of relationships surviving, which I kind of knew mm-hmm. coming in, but I cared. Yeah, yeah. And I... that's the, that's the person I am. I cared a lot. I could see the appeal in it uh, from the perspective of like subdom relationships or swingers or whatever the fuck uh-huh. where it's about trust. It's about I'm giving you, I'm being vulnerable with you but allowing you to fucking have this part of me because it's very intimate to be able to trust each other that way. Yeah. So I could see it being like they're like, hey, I know he fucks other dudes for money but it's like, or not other dudes. I know, I know he's fucking chicks for money. Well, well in, a lot in, of male porn stars You've got to start dudes, yeah. male on male first yeah. before you go to male female. That's true. At any rate. It's uh, actually not true. Well, what? it happens a lot. They actually go. It's not true. The other way quite a bit. It's not true, actually. You get more money for doing gay porn. Oh, you get yeah, a yeah. buck ton a lot of money for gay porn. Yeah. But like it's not about 10 always. About more typically. It's not always that, though. Not always, no. There's a, there's tons of mainstream yeah. dudes that have never gone that way. But if you're like a middle of the road or lower level person, they very start frequent, off. Yeah. they very fr- frequently go into gay shit because they just can't pay their bills otherwise. Yeah. At any rate, oh. that's not what it was about. What it's about is if I can trust you with my emo- my emotional health, I don't care about the physical shit. That is a form of intimacy for sure. So I can yes. see the appeal of it. But yeah, there aren't a whole lot of people in that industry, frankly, and we've met fucking tons of them. That are very that are mentally healthy, and they're also very My frequently point. really young, like in their very early twenties. So that's yeah. like you're you're not that many mentally healthy, and you're very young and dumb. You've got money, a lot of weird shit happens. Yeah, yeah. and life happens. We mm-hmm. shouldn't be any nobody should be making life decisions that young at, for about anything. Isn't that funny? I agree. And like you, you, know, you I can, can at say eighteen that years old, getting married early in the yeah, no court, sure. You know, at eighteen like, years old now, you can't buy tobacco, but you can fucking yeah. get one hundred thirty thousand dollars of student loans. Yeah, which is odd to me. Which is crazy. It's crazy. It's weird what we consider trust in this country. But so, so I was okay with it, right, for quite a long time, and then something hit me one day where I wasn't okay. What wasn't? 
It was feelings. feelings. Oh, yeah. all right. It was feelings. And I was no longer okay with it, but he was okay with it. Mm. And I expressed these because I'm very honest. Mm. I'm always very honest. And it didn't matter because it was a job right. for him. Mm. And that's okay. Like, that's perfectly okay. Mm-hmm. But once I feel like your partner is not okay with that, then it's not okay anymore, right? Well, I mean, so, ultimately, if he's, he's going to do what he wants to do, the, the, it should have just... And he did. It should just end there. He did. Right? But yeah. at the t- everybody's always fucking dumb and hopeful. Yeah. Oh, but for that's sure. Just, it's not a criticism. It's just I was nature. always so hopeful is. that he would just quit for me. And, you know, that's like the typical, like... I don't. I don't, actually don't know if it's typical. It's but, oh yeah, fuck yeah. You are typical that women expect men to change and they never do. That is pretty. Yeah, typical, yes. but That's, you know, somebody being like me who is very kind and very like giving. I mean, it was, it was an experience. Mm-hmm. It was definitely experience, and to be honest, I wouldn't change it for the world because it now has made me how I am. Mm-hmm. And now my current boyfriend really reaps the benefit because I am just so caring and just like, uh, honestly, I would never walk into a a female, female, like male threesome and be okay with it. I was never okay with that. Mm. And that's how the porn industry is. You're just okay with that. I'm not going to eat pussy. I'm Mm. sorry. I'm not. Yeah. That's how I am. But, like, you have, it's, it's just a whole industry. And you know what? I fucking support it. Mm. That's the great part. Porn is great. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty dope. It is great. That's the thing. Like, it's so great. But was it meant for me long term? No, it wasn't. Mm. And I respect that. Right. Because as soon as, uh, well, I can't even say as soon as I had enough. Because it was a very long time before I'd had mm-hmm. enough. Um, I was done and I was out of dating a porn star and having my normal life back. You know, like it was it was very much so just me back to normal life with mm-hmm. a normal person that right. understood that I am very sexually attractive to like whatever. Mm-hmm. But I don't want that lifestyle. Right. Yeah, it's different. It's very de- it, and, and that's what I, I like kick myself in the ass for telling myself like I was okay with it for a very long time because mm-hmm. I was I didn't care mm-hmm. but then that's not who my true self was mm-hmm. and I will credit this man for whatever the fuck he does because he he didn't he can't tell the change you know that was, that's a whole year right and was I happy? No, I wasn't happy. But am I happy now? Yeah, I'm very happy. So it's it's more of a thing where you find yourself, whether it's a porn star or not, you find it and you leave it. Mm. And that's what I did. Does your current boyfriend know yeah. that you dated? And is, is he like, yo, what the fuck? Um, honestly, he had told me he was very nervous that I was, I had a certain standard Uh and sexually or just, just in general. Okay. Cause I I think that's a common misconception about what like porn, because porn sex is not real sex. It's not. It's, it's, it's a, it's a performance. When I was in that relationship, I had to realize that and I did. And still I was not mentally okay with mm. it that's your your perception changes a lot throughout that right so when i had met my current man it was he was very nervous and i was like i just wanted to tell him like please don't like because it's not like that yeah it's not we've had every porn it's not the porn here it's not the open fucking vag going like with a dick going to vag thing, like yeah, it's going not dry like butthole that. and stuff. Like mm. no one ever goes dry butthole. Yeah. 
and uh, porn. Yeah, it'd be dangerous. I see people doing that shit all the yeah. time, but it's not. They just, but it's, it's it's not good though. No, it's not. Not it's as not. Like, it's not good. It's not real. Like they they fucking do the prep work off camera, so they're still doing yeah. stuff first. They just don't yeah. show it in the video, and then people like fucking some dumb dude is like, I'm gonna dive in here and see what happens, and Oof. then. You get, you get you get a little you get, torn rectum. You get grounded for a while. Yeah, lose your butthole privileges. Yeah, you but do. Honestly, the thing I want to know is like, what fucking prep work do you do to get your butthole that big? Because I just want to know. A lot of gapers out there. A lot of gaping I, buttholes. I would just love to have a dick slide in my butthole and not have a problem with it, but it's a fucking process still. Yeah. Mm. And I I just want to make porn star friends now because mm. I'm like. So you can learn the tricks, right? What are you doing? Yeah. Are you walking around with a butt plug yes. in your ass? Actually, yes. Yeah. Like, or it's either beads or plugs. Fuck. And they, they just put, like, if they're going to do a scene in the afternoon, they'll put them in the night before or that morning and just walk around with them for a while and then slowly pull it out. Practice makes perfect. Them. Yeah. Practice especially with anal dude like i'm just saying like i was just humbled by the fact that that's an interesting word to use for anal sex uh, humbled, humbled? Yeah, i always humbled. feel very humble when i'm having well, anal sex you, but you, you know what i'm saying though is like butt sex is not just like yeah, yeah. Like you have to take some time. Yeah, yeah whole, the, the first switch. the first couple of inches are all right. The last, you know, five are a street. Getting five. the okay, head in but is the problem. This is the life, thing I mean. that yeah. the, the head is fine. Yeah, it's when you reach that second fucking like vein knuckle. Not vein because I've got it's, knuckles. It's a on second my dick. layer. Yeah, second, that's the bitch. Second layer. Man. What do you mean second yeah. layer? Explain that. So. Apparently, past the head, when you go back into foreskin, yeah. right where the cirque starts. Is it because it, like it has a different viscosity, or because it's deeper in your it's asshole? It's just it's more sensitive somehow. I don't, I hmm. fucking don't know. But it's always like the head's good. Hmm. Yeah. But when you get that extra inch in there, that second layer of butthole like gets you. Ah. Uh-huh. It's like I don't want this anymore. Yeah. You know, like you still enjoy it or no? No, I fucking hate that shit. That yeah. shit hurts. Yeah, shit hurts. Well, it's 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 fifty fifty in this rope. People either love it or they hate it. You know, it's like uh, Daniel Tosh said: if you, uh, it's like eating vegetables. If you're forced to do it when you're young, you won't enjoy it when you're older. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's very very true. <laughs> it's one of my favorite jokes yeah. of all time. <laughs> I love that dude. Well, what I'm saying is like, it's just very different. Like. <laughs> We've t- I mean, you guys have obviously never have a, ha- had a dick slammed in your asshole at like 60 miles an hour. Yeah, I'm no, just not saying. Yet. Not that fast. No. Uh, fuck, I hope not. No. Yeah, Dan. Not. 20. 20, maybe. Yeah. It's 20. a school zone. I like, I mean, it's I don't, school <laughs> it's, uh, I'm going to start using it. I'm going to start telling him this is a school zone. You it's need not to the take Audubon. it easy. It's a school zone, and you will get fined double for what you just did. True, and that's yeah. great. Like, I would... I would literally love to learn secrets of like maybe you do anal all the time. Like I don't know, but fuck that shit hurts. Like, yeah. and, but the thing is, like, it's great when it's done right. Mm. Yeah. And then you have these dudes that are like, oh yeah, butthole sex, boom, like punch you in the fucking butthole, and that shit hurts. No, no, I bet. I Dan. Bet. Uh, you've- <laughs> Fuck. We've we've discussed a lot today. Uh, dead remains, butthole sex, dating porn stars, yeah, Hooters and Raleigh. Another fine episode of Drinking Bros, hasn't it? Uh, let's get to the Drinking Bro of the Week, shall we? Um, is there anybody you'd like to dedicate it to? Maybe your father. Who is your father? You said My he was a Marine. My dad, yeah. actually. Yeah. My dad actually is a Marine Corps veteran as well. Is he a piece of shit like us? No. Nice guy. My dad is like the most genuine, most amazing man I've ever met in my life. When I say piece of shit, I mean, does he like talk shit? And oh, fuck yeah. Like dark, my dad will talk shit all like, day, but. Yeah. What's his name? Joe. Joe. Uh-huh. Joe. Yep. He's a junior, though. He's a twin. Whoa. Yeah, and uh, the most genuine, most perfect human I think I've ever met in my life. What do you think he's going to say after listening to this episode? Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're going to go to church, and uh, <laughs> I hope my man's parents also don't listen to this. But um, being punched in the butthole at sixty, sixty, yeah. yeah. And look, I mean, I wasn't planning on sending them this, but. 
No. Oh, but now they, now but, I feel like I have to. But they Google Tara? me, so... Um, oh, it's gonna, they're going to find it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. going to find it, and that's okay. That's yeah. okay, but I Is really would love... Is there anything you'd love... like to say to them right now before we get off here? <laughs> I just love your son a lot, and it doesn't matter if I get punched in the butthole or not. They already don't like you. No. And now this is going to... But gonna... they should. You're like the most likable person. Yeah. Honestly. Uh, well... Well, for somebody like me, because I don't... I, don't, I hate preamble... Somebody like when whatever one of our employees walks up to me, Alec actually will walk up to me. <laughs> he goes, "So you know, you know how blah blah blah." I'm like, "Stop fucking with the preamble. Get to the meat and potatoes right now." Yeah, yeah. And you're a meat, meat and potatoes kind of gal. You yeah. skip all the pretense and just say whatever fucked up shit you're thinking. It's super funny to me. Punch True. that butthole with. And 60. you also know people aren't lying when they act like that. Like I don't lie to people. Right. I just say whatever. And the fuck. I'm pretty drunk right now, so everything I've said, I've said with intent. So. Yeah, and we, you've you've had a lot of fire in your belly today. We appreciate it. And yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do another show on that one. We will. Oh, we will. We will. Oh, we will. But yeah, I I would just really like to nominate my dad because he's <laughs> he's just a great human Good, and I'm glad. Uh, United States Marine and. Fuck yeah, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> he gets that. He'll get that if he. Fuck my life if you listen to this, but like, I love you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you, uh, Tara. This has been a treat. It's really, really funny. I appreciate Come back this. and join us on, on this show, Drinking Broettes. The invitation is always open to you. Uh, I know you and T- Tiffany are beef fries in this life, and we appreciate the time today. We're D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway. I am Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.